so we're going to be talking about critical values quite a bit. So to to um, refresh, or if this is new to you, then we're going to be talking about if we are given an area alpha, which is the area to the left of z under the density curve, Um, then we say that z is the alpha critical value. Or we denote it z sub alpha. I don't know why that happened. All right. So what does this look like? So let's take a look at our density curve again. So here's the bell curve. Ah, geez. Why would you do that? Okay. Here's the density curve again. I'm trying to make it as uniform as possible, or as, sorry, as symmetric as possible. So here's zero. So the z-scores are the values, you know, along the, the line here. And if we're given an area to the left of z, so for instance, let's say we're looking at the left or the bottom 5%, right? So alpha is 0 0.05. Then the z-score at the top of that area is that critical value corresponding to the bottom 5%, right? So remember, this is 5% of the distribution is underneath here. Right. And so how do we find this? Well, we can use technology or we can use a table, right? So as we discussed before, if we use a table, so standard area table, then we'll be looking at 0 0.05 inside the table and working our way out to the, um, the margin. So if we use that, we'll find that 0, 0.0, that this critical value um, is the is negative 1.645. Now, because of symmetry, right? So an aside here about the symmetry of this, that's what makes this so beautiful. By symmetry, we know that the area in the left tail corresponds exactly to the area in the right tail, so long as the only difference between um, the value A and the value a negative A is that they're the same value, just one is positive, one's negative. So in other words, if we want to find the upper 5%, so again, 5% here. Now we're looking at Z 0 0.95, okay? And we know that Z 0 0.95 then is going to be the negative, or the, sorry, the positive version of the 0 0.05 critical value. And this is true regardless of whether you're looking at the top 5% and bottom 5% or the top 10% and bottom 10%. Um, they're always going to be positive and negative versions of each other. And we also get a cool consequence of this, which is that if you want to find the probability that Z, that the absolute value of Z is between two, um, is lower than a value. So for instance, if you want to find the probability that z is no further away than, say, 1 from the mean, so to refresh your memory, that might mean we're between negative 1 and 1. So we're looking at the CDF evaluated at 1 minus the CDF evaluated at negative 1. But we just said 
that this right here is going to correspond in a special way to the CDF evaluated at 1. So we get CDF at 1 minus 1 minus CDF at 1. In other words, we can find this by multiplying the CDF at 1 times 2 and subtracting 1. And so if we do that, and we can use, you know, we can use normal CDF, we can use a table, then we'll find that probability, right? So for our purposes then, why don't we go to a table? So where is 1 in this table? Well, here's 1 in the... Uh, in, in the rows, so that's the row header, and then the column header that we want is going to be 0. So that's this one. So we're looking at 0 0.8413. 8413. This is approximation, of course. Multiply that by 2 and subtract 1, and that should be the correct value. So I'm just going to calculate this real quick. And I get that this is equal to 0 0.6826. In other words, if we want to interpret this, roughly 68.26% of all random outcomes from this distribution, from the standard normal distribution, lie between negative 1 and 1. So in other words, this is a restatement of part of the empirical rule where we say so remember that we had said that by the empirical rule, we said that about 68% of data values lie within one standard deviation of the mean when the distribution of data is bell curve shaped. And we'll get we'll get more precise here in the connection in the later section, um, but this is where it comes from. So we're talking about an idealization of uh, what our random data may look like, uh, the distribution of this random sample. Um, with a large enough sample size, and how we model it using the language of probability.